Welcome back to another UNC Tar Heels basketball recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me is our director of basketball recruiting, our very own David Sisk, longtime AAU high school college coach. David has seen it all just about in the sport of basketball, and that's why he is an esteemed member of our staff. David, it's official visit time, my man. Hubert Davis and the Carolina coaches are going to be able to see prospects face-to-face starting June 1st, and Hubert's already got eight official visits lined up in June because the dead period ends at midnight Monday, May 31st. So we're going to launch in to talking about the official visits that Carolina has coming up. We're doing this in two parts. We're going to talk about four kids in the first part, and then we're going to do a separate podcast, part two. We're going to talk about the other four kids, and we're going to go chronologically. And before we do that, how excited are you that we're finally going to get kids on campus, face-to-face stuff, and these relationships that have been kind of growing a little bit through Zoom and FaceTime and that kind of stuff are really going to uh, figure their way out because kids are either going to say, yeah, I like that place, or I don't, and coaches are going to say the same thing. We're going to see some uh, a lot of activity here in the next six weeks or so, David. Yeah, it's good for us uh, because I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoy the visit part of it. Um, I think, number one, it got kind of monotonous um, with them not being able to do that. So everything's through Zoom calls and all that, and it just doesn't have the same vibe to it. Um, And when they're able to take the visits, there's a couple of things that happen. Number one, it gives – it's good for us, number one, from a content standpoint of yeah. it. So you're you're more direct exact on your timing exactly when you talk to a kid. So if I'll pull a name out of a hat, Seth Trimble visits. So we can get in touch with him or or Antonio Curro, his AAU coach or whoever. We know at a certain time instead of rolling around sometime in early in August and say, hey, I've not talked to them since May. Let's hit them up and see what's going on. You know, yeah. it's not as <clears> – <throat> it, there's more of reasoning behind it. It's not as spontaneous. Um, the other thing is um, it gives us a feel, not only for content, but it gives us some quality too because I think it makes it easier to see – who North Carolina is actually serious about and who they're going to be involved with. I think it, you know, it, let, let's go back two years ago when they could take the visits. You knew who the five teams were if they got an official visit. Yep. So if a guy come down and said, hey, you know, yeah, I, I, these are my teams and he names off six or seven and I'm really serious about Wake Forest let's say, and Wake Forest doesn't get an official visit, you could kind of read through yeah. all the bull crap, okay? And you knew, okay, no, the schools that he takes, they take visits to, those are the ones they're serious about. And then you start getting into the fine-tuning, the fine print of things where you start trying to figure out, hey, if you're – after this guy, you don't want to get that fifth visit. He's not going to be around by then. So it's going. We had more of those in the fall. So if you got that first one or two, three visits, you knew you had a better shot than where you were hoping you were. The guy was still available by visit number five. If that makes sense. Absolutely. But the difference now they're doing it in June to get called up. I'm interested in one thing, and then we'll get on to this. I'm interested to see. And I don't know why the NCAA wouldn't do this. And I've really not heard it discussed anywhere else. Why don't they let them take these five visits in June and count them as their junior visits since they didn't get to go and then take another five in the fall if they want to do that, count them as their seniors. So you could get maybe 10 official visits between June and whenever they sign, you know. So um, just a thought. Yeah, I've actually heard eight advanced say, look, well, how about eight? Just we are where we are. We're not going to go back and retroactively do stuff, but give the kids eight visits because there's going to be a lot of pressure. I think these kids are going to cram in a bunch of visits. 
maybe we'll get an opportunity to kind of marinate with what their experience was because they're off to another one often in the middle of the week. If you look at the dates for the ones that Carolina has coming up, it's all over the place. Part of it because kids are playing AAU on the weekend. They're doing their business during the week. It's going to be tough for parents because of work and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes a parent or two might not be able to accompany their kid on an official visit. So I think having eight would make a lot more sense. And I think it would probably lessen some of the pressure some of these kids to to, to make quick decisions. I think we're going to see some quick decisions here because there are spots that there's going to be sort of a sense of urgency. They might go quickly if North Carolina or whoever else has three spots and they've told these kids they have three spots. I'm just throwing that number out there. There's going to be some kids say, man, I better go ahead and commit now, even though they haven't given the, the full process an opportunity, which wouldn't have been the case before. When you have more time to spread things out, you could take your time. So uh, I'm concerned about that being an issue. However, from the publisher of this site standpoint, I'm really excited to, that we're going to learn a lot more about Hubert's recruiting approach. We're going to learn what's different from an OV at Chapel Hill now, as opposed to one when Roy was the head coach. How different is it? Hubert has said all along, personal relationships. I want to bring guys here. If you saw the video of Justin McCoy arriving and Brady Manick arriving, Hubert's going out and giving them hugs and stuff like that. It's going to be really interesting to see what we learn from these kids what an OV in Chapel Hill is like right now. And one thing I'll add to it before we get into the players, <clears throat> it seems like a million years ago, but if you remember 2020, 2000, maybe 19, I lose track. COVID, COVID has really made me lose track of years. I tweeted something about Tiger Woods winning the Masters in 2018. And they said, yeah, that was a great accomplishment since he won it in 2019. And I'm, 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 I'm Forget, I'm losing track of time. Well, but, I think with a lot of people, you just want to forget that those 12 to 14 months even existed. So. In 2019, the NCAA, if you'll remember, passed a rule for the first time that they could take uh, five visits their junior year and five visits yeah. their senior year. Before, yeah. it was only five to senior year. So it doubled from five to ten. So that's that's like I said, I mean, I, I'm going to be interested to see if they go back and say, okay, we're going to make up for that lost time. So, well, they've done like that said, with just, just so many other things. I mean, it makes sense to do to give them more because they've done it with so much stuff. And I think another reason it, it, they should do more is because all those unofficial visits they couldn't take for this long. So a kid may take an official visit to 12 schools. He gets a pretty good idea of where he wants to take his five. Now they don't have the luxury of having some of that in-person intel to determine whether or not they want to make it official. So I'm with you. There need, there should be more. <clears throat> there are eight kids right now. Who knows if somebody else will, will line one up between now and when we run these videos. Eight kids uh, that are, will visit Chapel Hill in the month of June. We're going to go chronologically and start with Will Shaver, a four-star forward, six foot ten, 245 pounds from Birmingham, Alabama, not too far from where you are, the number 139 kid in the country, and he's coming right away. June 1st and 2nd, Will Shaver will take his official at Chapel Hill. Tell us about him, his relationship with Carolina, and what you like about him. Well, I'm going to be honest, out of all the, the recruits, he may be the one that I know least about. He is the only individual out of the eight that I've not gotten to either speak to or speak to a coach. So um, they, they just things going on, they've been, it's been a little difficult to get in touch with. But uh, the thing that I see about him, it's interesting at his size. And you know, the story that we did basically looked at his history. He slimmed down from 280 to 240. And he's, he's got a big frame. But he's kind of a stretch guy, 6'10", 240, and, and he's, not, he's not lean. And like I said, he's changed his body. He's a thick kind of kid, but he, you can tell he's put together and he's worked hard on his body from what he was. But, but you still think about kids like him going and posting up, and you think about leaner kids – maybe a little bit quicker going outside and stretching the floor. But with that big body, he can stretch the floor. So that's an interesting thing to me. Uh, he wants to make his decision on his birthday, which is September 17th. 
He's been compared. I'm looking, Dan, I'm actually looking at my notes here, some stories that I did. His uh, comparisons have been Kelly Olenek, Drew Timmy, and Kellen Love. Yeah. So that kind of tells you that. Uh, has some impressive offers. Uh, good student, um, you know, offers places like Vanderbilt and Stanford, but a lot of regional offers. Uh, Alabama, Florida State offer from Georgetown too. Big Ten's got involved. Illinois, Iowa State, uh, Virginia Tech, Wake Forest, and the ACC. So pretty active recruitment. Uh, going to be interested, by the way, Rivals 2022 class uh, updated comes out tomorrow. So going to be interested to see where he's at uh, and, and how high he jumps up. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because this podcast will run the day – Tomorrow, which is, well, today, it's Thursday if you're watching this fresh. We're recording this late Wednesday night. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where he is. I know that there's some other kids that are going to change, and you think Derek Lively will move up and a few others. Uh, when you look at Chambers' offer sheet and those comparisons, those are three really good players. Drew Jimmy, by the way, just announced he's going to be back at Gonzaga for another year. I would think that if he's getting those kind of comparisons and that kind of activity in his recruitment, we're going to see him jump up from 139. Well, here's the only thing. Sometimes on comparisons, I take them with a grain of salt because I'll give you an example. If I was going to rate basketball, I'm say I'm looking at basketball players and I say, well, you know, this guy, he's uh, 6'6", 225. He's built like a Greek god. He reminds me of Andrew Jones. Now, he may not play like Andrew Jones. And I'm talking about the Andrew Jones who's on the other screen, not another one. So, not the uh, one at Texas? <laughs> no, not that one. Not the, the, you know, no, the one in North Carolina. This Andrew Jones used to be able to shoot back in the day. <laughs> I believe it. You told me about <laughs> your camp days. Yeah. So, uh, elite, and you could do defensive slides too. Absolutely, a little bit. I'm going to have – and so I think a lot of times we look at a guy's frame and his body and things like that, and you say, okay, let's compare it to this guy because he, he looks like him. I don't know yet. One thing I'm excited about is the first week in open period in July, I think it's July 8th through the 11th, uh, I'm planning – it's at Southern Swing if, if EYBL has Peach Jam where you have Peach Jam and Augusta, you have uh, Under Armour Nationals in Cartersville, Georgia, just north of Atlanta, which is what he plays. And then you're going to have the Adidas Nationals just outside of Birmingham and Hoover, Alabama. Uh, I may not even – I've seen some Nike teams, so I may just look at Under Armour and Adidas. But I'll definitely be in Cartersville. That's the easiest trip for me. So uh, I'm going to get to see a lot of him in early July, and I'm excited about that. Jalen Washington, four-star forward, six foot eight, 190 pounds, Gary, Indiana – not far from Chicago, the number 24 overall player in the class of 22. He'll be in town June 2nd and 3rd, so a slight little overlap there for a day with Will Shaver. So what's the latest with him? What are your thoughts about his visit and uh, what you like about him as a player? Really, really talented. Um, th this is a guy that his size, about 6'9", has uh, got a lot of athleticism and a lot of skill, and – Everybody that I've talked to will tell you that he is no doubt. Uh, I, I've not talked to anybody that says he's not a top 20 player. Uh, really got the goods. Um, and one thing I've noticed, too, notice that a lot of these kids, student athletes, uh, he's also uh, taking a visit to Stanford. and uh, But he's got a lot of Big Ten interests there, uh, Indiana and Purdue, Michigan State, Iowa, Illinois. The question is going to be, does he uh, leave the Indiana area? You know, uh, can anybody come in and snatch him away from uh, Indiana and, and Purdue? So um, this is where the official visits are huge because now teams have a better chance. Of, North Carolina has a better chance of being able to, to really put its best foot forward when teams come in on official visit. And I think we we all believed it. North Carolina probably has more to show than anybody else. So if if hmm. you and I'm just not saying it because we're here, but yeah. if you had an official visit, I think there's only a handful of schools that 
could show you as much as what North Carolina does. And I think yeah. they're blue bloods. So yeah. Kentucky, Kansas, yeah, they've gotten the same kind yeah. of thing. North yeah. Carolina do. So, you know, so they didn't have that opportunity last year. Maybe why they were really – they didn't need to. They got the in-state kids. So the timing was good on that. So, But like I said, the reason I say that, you would think if anybody could get them out of there, North Carolina might have that shot because of what they're going to be able to show on the official visit. So what was the kid's name? I, I'm, I'm trying to think. He ended up committing to Purdue – uh, that took the unofficial to Virginia and North Carolina about this time last year. You remember? Yeah, yeah I knew you were talking about it. He had to peek through the windows and, or yeah. something. The janitor couldn't even let him in. He just had to look through the windows. I, I, I can picture him right now. He's like a six, seven kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can picture his mom. He, his mom drove him down. He was from Indiana, and that's what made me think about that. You know, as much as he liked North Carolina and Virginia, you just knew then, hey, it's not going to work because the coaches couldn't even – talk to them while they were in on an unofficial visit or anything. So, you know, they, they were just really – there was not a whole lot they could see. Jalen Washington, there's an interesting discussion on our premium basketball board about him. Some people are saying, uh, you know, I don't know, he, he really can't play on the block that much and he's not good enough to play full-time outside. What, what is your take on where you think he might eventually be more useful at the college, more productive at the college level? Stretch four, man. And that's what I'm asking every player and every coach that I talk to. What has Hubert Davis said about the style that he is going to play? So if you look at these kids, we talked about Will Shepard. It's funny. As these offers come down, Jamie Shaw will send me a text every time one comes down. He says, well, I wonder what kind of player Hubert Davis likes. And they can all shoot. But these post guys, these stretch guys, so Shaver can stretch the floor. Washington can stretch the floor. Uh, Derek Lively, just the bouncy athletic, he's more of a five, but he's not a back-to-the-bucket, big Garrison Brooks look. I mean, really can run the floor. Um, but then you've got um, Deontay Green as more of an athletic kid, can stretch out a little bit. Isaac Trout. Now, he is a pure stretch four that can shoot. So, as I look at these kids that they're, they're offering, especially at that four spot, just about all these kids can step out on the floor and shoot, which 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 kid kind of gets me to what I'm trying to get at with them to say. I, right now, they're saying, yeah, Coach Davis says he just wants to play up tempo and all that. But I'm still waiting on somebody who tells me as these – Recruitments get farther on down and get more into detail to say, yeah, we're going to play you behind the three-point line. We're going to run the four out, a five out. We're looking to stretch. We're going to shoot 25 threes a game. We want to create space. That's kind of what I expect. And I think that those conversations are going to take place in the next over the next month. Yeah. Yeah. So well, when, when we do talk to these, when you do talk to these kids, you're going to get a little bit more of that. Justin Taylor is someone who is very upfront with you about. Uh, what he and Hubert Davis discussed. He's a six foot six, four star, six six wing out of Charlottesville, number sixty nine player in the class. He'll be in uh, the first weekend in June, June fifth and sixth. Uh, it, straight up, shoot. They like, he said Hubert likes the fact that I could shoot, and uh, Hubert was a shooter himself. Roy Williams often talked about you know Hubert Davis, you know propping up the fact he's the number two or three all time three point shooter, depending on what week it is. That, kind of bounces around there, I guess, with him and uh, and uh, with, with Curry and, and a couple other guys. But that's what Taylor said. He wants me because I can shoot. So give us a little bit more on Justin Taylor and his visit and um, the relationship with Carolina and how important a guy – he's a little different from the other kids on this list. So how important is his visit for maybe – for Hubert to qualify him or for maybe him to qualify Hubert and the new staff? Well, he wants shooting. Like you said, I think you put everything in a nutshell. You know, he's looking for that kind of kid. He wants that kind of guy on the wing. It's going to be able to make shots from the outside. Uh, and also, his lead recruiter is Jeff Lebo. So, not only did uh, uh, Hubert play like that, Jeff Lebo played like that. And, you know, and, and Justin told me that as much. He said, both coaches that I have 
can relate to me from style of play, and it can also relate to me because they know what it's like to, to play on good teams and be a great player at North Carolina, and they can kind of walk me through this process. Uh, he said that even though he lives in Charlottesville, Virginia, that uh, that offer from North Carolina had a different feel to it. You know, he's looking at other visits to Virginia Tech, to Syracuse, and to Indiana. So it looks right now, Virginia, he's from Charlottesville, but there's not a whole lot of talk right there. So it looks like those four schools uh, are getting those visits. And I, I just – I just think when it comes down to the end, if if you say, okay, now which guys do you think are really, really serious just from talking to him and the detail that we went into and just all the intricacies that he gave, um, I, I think North Carolina is going to be a very, very serious contender here for him. And I think he's a guy who, who's serious about, from his side, is serious about uh, University of North Carolina. Yeah, he's cramming those four visits in in about a 20-day period or so, if, I, if I'm correct. And, and do you think there's a chance that if – wherever he chooses to go, out of the kids we've talked to so far, he might be the first one to, to make a decision regardless of where it is that he goes. Whether I mean, it's there's, always, Syracuse. there's always that possibility because, I, I mean, as far as North Carolina, I don't know enough about Will Shaver yet. I, it's not going to be Jalen Washington. Now that I mean, Jay, doesn't mean Jalen Washington doesn't go to North Carolina, but he he's going to play all this out because of just all the Big Ten interest. I think there'll be other blue bloods get in too as it goes. So you know, it 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 can behoove him to stretch it out. But if you look, Justin Taylor's takes the third visit, uh, and I, I can't. Uh, if you look at those early guys, if, if you say, all right, who pops out of the first four that we're going to talk about tonight, to me, he would be the pick. Doesn't mean he's going to do it. Am I favoring North Carolina right now? No. But just putting the paper trail together, um, I would say that if there was a likely guy right there, I, I think he fits that bill. Yeah, I, I just I got a sense someone's going to pop in June. And um... – just my, my gut's telling me right now that wherever he goes, he might be the first one to do it, whether it's Indiana, uh, Hokies, or Syracuse, or Carolina. But Derek Lively, the final kid we're going to talk about in this podcast, we'll hit the other four in a second podcast that we're going to take here in a few minutes. We're going to break them up for you guys. Derek Lively, you saw him about a month ago, uh, five weeks ago, when you were up in uh, Indianapolis. You love this kid. We did a podcast. We probably spent 15 minutes talking about him. So kind of refresh some people with your thoughts on the most recent time that you've seen Derek Lively, how he would fit in to Carolina. And you were just talking a few moments ago about him being bouncy. Just to draw an, a, a, um, a player from uh, recent UNC history so people can try to try to visualize, is there some Bryce Johnson bounciness in his game? He's He, he kind of he, – he's seven – He's seven feet. So uh, he, he, I think as far as comparisons go, well, who they've had, one doesn't come to mind right off the bat because he is just so coordinated and athletic. And, and I mean, he's got these long, graceful strides and he has timing and he's doing it. I, you know, and every time I read a story that somebody writes about him, I thought he was probably about 6'11", and other people was riding a 7'2 center out of Pennsylvania. And I mean, if he he didn't look to me to be that tall, but I mean, he's he's legit right there, you know, at that seven foot mark. So somebody calls him a seven footer, I don't dispute it. Um, I think I th I'm thinking Reyes was maybe 41 or somewhere like that. He's, for, he's 45, yeah. 45. I think he takes the biggest jump of anybody in his class. Now, I may be wrong. I've not seen everybody. But if not, he'll be right there at it for taking the biggest jump into the five-star range. And I'm not talked to Jamie Shaw. I'm not talked to, to any of these other guys that do the rankings, Rob Cassidy, Russ Wood. But they, they've seen him. Uh, and I think that he probably goes uh, into the five-star range Definitely top 25. I'd put him top 20. Uh, and and just about his recruitment, 
Hubert Davis was his lead recruiter at, uh, you know, originally when Roy yeah. Williams was there. So he, he talked about how that was uh, really good for him. Uh, so I think obviously there's, there's some North Carolina interest, but I think Duke's getting involved. I don't know how heavily Kentucky is. I, I couldn't imagine anybody not offering him, but <laughs> take a look. I've had his list of offers, Florida, Florida state, Georgetown, Kansas, Memphis, LSU, Maryland, Miami, Michigan, North Carolina, Ohio state, Oklahoma, Penn state, Pitt, Providence, SMU, Stanford, Temple, UCLA, Washington, Xavier, He's one of those guys who just want more offers before it's over and he can count. Yeah, wherever he wants to go, he'll go. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's got that North Carolina. He set up a, a North Carolina visit. He set up a Duke visit. Uh, Adam, when is the Duke visit? The North Carolina visit is June 8th and 9th. Is the Duke visit right around that time? Yeah, I think they're right on the hills. So, uh, they've got oh, – no, no, it's not. I'll take that back. He's going to Duke June 29th. Okay. I take that back. So – but Adams Gore and some other people that, that are really good at, at national recruiting, and that's what they do independently. They, they've already built this into the first uh, North Carolina Duke recruiting battle in the Hubert Davis era at North Carolina. So uh, <laughs> it'll be inter- I'm going to tell you what, man, if North Carolina could get him, oh, my goodness, because I'm, I'm telling you, he is a he's, a he's a difference maker. And I know I rave about him, but to me, he's a difference maker. Outstanding. Those are the first four we're discussing. Will Shaver, Jim in Washington, Justin Taylor, Derek Lively. When we come back for part two in the next video, we're going to hit on the other four kids that have officials lined up for the month of June. You have been watching TarHillIllustrate.com. Go make sure you go over to our site, TarHillIllustrate.com. And for just $8.33 a month, you get everything this guy writes. And we don't do, we don't do a lot of podcasts, but he's putting out three, four, or five pieces a week, notes on the board all the time. All of it is premium. You can only access it if you are a premium subscriber. It's just $8.33 a month. And if you're also a football fan, football recruiting is going to go nuts in June. And you guys know that Dina is all over stuff, and all of her stuff in June is going to be premium as well. So if you want to be in the know, you got to sign up and be a member. He's David. I'm AJ. Thanks for stopping by.